Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Today, we're going to be going over my favorite selections from each round in your upcoming fantasy football draft in 2023. I've seen a couple other creators make videos similar to this, so I'm going to put my own little twist on it. Uh, this is going to be based off a 12-man league. I got the data, the ADPs, it's called. Uh, that is average draft position, if you're not already aware where the players are going. Uh, I found this information on fantasydata.com. If you want to go look it up yourself, then you are more than welcome to do so. But first round, the real value picks in the first round for me is going to be number one, Tyreek Hill. All right, he's going currently seventh. If you guys can see that on the uh, right side of the screen right here. I wouldn't mind taking him in front of players like Austin Eckler, even Cooper Cup and Travis Kelsey. I think there's an argument for Tyreek Hill to go in front of all of these players. And if I just take a look at his fantasy stats last season, a lot of people are saying that Tyreek Hill is an elite level wide receiver when Tua is on the field, but when he's not, it's a little more concerning, but I don't find that to be the case at all because it's not like this guy can't score when Tua is not on the field. All right, he still scores a lot of points and he still provides that elite upside for you, even if his main quarterback's not on the field. So that's why I feel so confident in taking Tyreek Hill before those other three guys. Now, I realize Travis Kelsey is the greatest tight end in fantasy football. So if you want a tight end and get it out of the way early, then I totally agree with the Travis Kelsey pick. But personally, I'd probably go Tyreek Hill right there. And number 11 on this list in the first round, Nick Chubb, I think. Nick Chubb is being severely undervalued. I think he could finish above. Honestly, if I if I had to say, I think he could finish as the number one running back. Do I think that he will? I do not know. But his situation just got a lot better with Kareemi Hunt, you know, getting off the team. He's no longer there to catch all the passes. Do I think Nick Chubb is going to catch as many passes as Christian McCaffrey or Austin Eckler? Definitely not. That's that's not what you get out of Nick Chubb, but he is by far the best runner in this league, straight downhill runner that I've that I've seen. So I don't mind him at pick number 11. I would take him probably before Stefan Diggs. I would take him before Saquon Barkley, in my own opinion, but that's just me. If you're in a PPR league, you probably want Barkley, but in most other standard leagues and stuff like that, I wouldn't mind Nick Chubb at 11 at all. The other thing I want to touch on quickly is CD Lamb at number 12. I do love CD Lamb this upcoming season, but I do think he's placed perfectly at number 12 because I would take him before players on the next page that we're going to take a look at, like or AJ Brown, Jonathan Taylor. I think there's a clear argument to take him over Devontae Adams as well, but we'll get into that. All right, if we move on to the next page here and we take a look at it, the guys I really like on this page, Amon Ra St. Brown and Tony Pollard. I'm going to ask St. Brown. We're going to start with him. Jamison Williams out six games due to his gambling thing in the parking lot that happened or whatever. And you can't be on NFL property while you are gambling. So he's out for six games, which means all the targets are going to go to Amon Ra. They don't really have another elite wide receiver on this team. I think Jamison Williams in the future could easily get there to be an elite level wide receiver. And I think he will. But for this upcoming season, Amon Ra is still that guy in Detroit. And he he's honestly going in round number one at some time. So so if you can get him here at round number two at pick 16, I would love the selection there. And then there's a guy like Tony Pollard at 18. I would pick Tony Pollard over Derrick Henry. I would pick Tony Pollard. This might be a crazy take, but I would take Tony Pollard over Jonathan Taylor right now with the situation going on. I don't know what the Colts are doing. I don't know if they're going to be petty and sit Jonathan Taylor, say he's injured all year. Who knows what could happen with this guy? But if Jonathan Taylor plays, obviously, he's an elite talent. Tony Pollard, though, I just love the upside. I love what I saw last season. And when Zeke is not on this team anymore, which he's not this year, for now, hopefully they don't re-sign him, but Tony Pollard's going to be crazy. He's going to go crazy for you. Another name I just want to quickly touch on in this list, Garrett Wilson. I think Garrett Wilson could finish better than some other wide receivers on this list. I think he could realistically go at the beginning of the second round, but I wouldn't push him up that far. I'm not going to get too crazy, but that's his potential, I think, is to finish right above maybe Devontae Adams on this list. I know you guys probably think I'm absolutely crazy, but this is my personal list, so it is what it is. Uh, one more name, one more name I want to touch on here is Ramondre Stevenson going at number 24. That's his average ADP right now. In ESPN leagues, let me tell you guys, he's going at number 33 to 35 or... 32 to 35, somewhere around that range. And I am so happy to draft him in that range. If he falls to me in any of my drafts, I'm absolutely taking him on ESPN. 
but in basketball leagues, in these other leagues that are half PPR and whatnot, I don't think he's going to fall to that third round. But second round seems a little bit heavy for Ramondre. If you get him in the third, though, love the player. Absolutely love him. Round number three here, I think the value lies in Chris Alave. I think he's an elite level talent. Uh, he should only get better with Derek Carr at quarterback this year. Last year, his quarterback situation was an absolute disaster. Year number two, breakout year, hopefully for Chris Olave, and hopefully that offense uh, meshes a little better, I should say, than last season. And the other value pick, I don't know if this is really a value pick. He is going pretty early, but I will say I think he has very high potential to finish more of in the top 10 of running backs, top five even if we're getting really crazy i don't know if he's gonna get up there but travis Etienne jr i think is primed for a breakout year jacksonville jaguars i've talked about this in the past couple of videos i think they are all elite talented players trevor lawrence travis Etienne, calvin ridley christian kirk evan ingram i think these are all amazing players and i want everything to do with this jaguars offense this upcoming season i think their running back strength the schedule is also very easy in this upcoming year next page here round number four jameer gibbs is the first name that jumps out for me i would select him earlier than the 38th pick in my opinion i think he has an elite pass catching upside in this offense they also have the second best offensive line in the entire national football league which is also good for david montgomery later on in the draft um I don't know if we talk, I don't think we're going to talk about him in this video, but I also like David Montgomery's chances of having a great year. Listen, you don't know what you're going to get from Gibbs. We've never seen him play. We have seen college tape from him at Alabama, and he looks like the next Alvin Kamara. I know everybody says that, but it seems to be true, uh, at least in my opinion, from what I saw in the footage. Next name that jumps out to me at number 45, Calvin Ridley, especially in best ball leagues, Calvin Ridley is going in the third round. So if you can get him in the fourth round in these ESPN leagues and other Yahoo, whatever site you're using, Calvin Ridley's a steal in the fourth round. I don't have to go over the whole Jaguars spiel like I just did. Uh, I really love this team. And then last but not least, I'm going to touch on Terry McLaurin. Is so consistent year after year in fantasy football. I don't know if he's undervalued, in my opinion, because right above him, you have Calvin Ridley, you have DeAndre Hopkins. Those are two solid players. So I'm not jumping for Terry McLaurin past those two guys, personally. I still think he's a good piece to have on your fantasy football team. Maybe not the best ball leagues where whoever scores the most points in your wide receivers and your running backs, that counts for your team. But ESPN redraft leagues, I love Terry McLaurin. I think Sam Howell will provide a little bit more upside than Terry's had in the past with his terrible quarterbacks. All right, the first person that comes to mind when I take a look at this list in round five is clearly Jerry Judy. I think Jerry Judy has the most potential in round five to have a breakout year. Russell Wilson played like crap last year. If he plays 5% better, Jerry Judy's going to get one and a half times better. And he had the best season of his entire career, his short career, I, I should say. But he had the best season in terms of fantasy points last season when Russell Wilson was struggling. So I love the selection in this upcoming season. Next name on this list that I like are actually these bottom two guys. Number 59, Christian Watson. Number one wide receiver on this Packers team. We don't know how Jordan Love is going to perform, but he should still see the most targets on this team by far. I think he's the most talented wide receiver. There was concern last season. He was scoring touchdowns at way too high of an efficiency rate to his target share i think it was around 25 percent of his receptions ended in touchdowns in the latter portion of the season and that is not sustainable by any means but he needs to get up to that target share of 9 10 12 even higher this season to see massive upside which i think could easily happen and hopefully uh christian watson and jordan love have that chemistry that we're looking for deandre swift at number 60 that's a little bit early in my opinion for swift i've been getting him uh, around pick number 70 to 75 i think that's a good range for swift we don't know a hundred percent that he's going to be the starter on this team personally i do think he's going to be the starter and if you can get him in a round or two later, I love Swift. I love, his, I love his potential. But at this spot at number 60, I'm not too crazy about him. If you need a running back, certainly this late in the draft, he is a great option. All right, on to round number six here. I think Drake London is a name that jumps out to me personally. Now, a lot of people might be out on Drake London, and I actually made a video earlier on this season about how I think Drake London could be a bust. But I also think in best ball leagues, especially... He provides good value and could go off certain games, but I wouldn't be comfortable starting him on a week to week basis. So especially in best ball leagues, I like him. If the Falcons decide to run into the ground with Bijan Robinson, 
then Drake London will get phased out of this offense and it will just be a repeat of last year. We don't want to see that at all. So there's a high risk, high reward for Drake London here. I'd probably be willing to take the risk on him just for that potential upside, especially in this section where either you're drafting a uh, suspended Alvin Kamara, Kyle Pitts right before him, Mike Williams, who has been super boom or bust. So you're getting good value with Drake London, in my opinion here. And then at number 70, Christian Kirk, I think is super undervalued. Did everybody forget what Christian Kirk did last season with Trevor Lawrence? He clearly has elite chemistry with a guy who is just coming into his own in the league. He, he's going to be the number two wide receiver behind Calvin Ridley on this team. So he's going to draw the weaker cornerbacks. He's going to get more points this season. And, and Christian Kirk, old Jags team, I'm not going through it again for you guys. They're going to go crazy. Round number seven here, the names that pop out to me. First of all, Brandon Ayuk. Everybody's talking about Brandon Ayuk, hyping him up this year. He is a bit more consistent than Debo Samuel. And especially since Christian McCaffrey came into this offense, it seems like Ayuk is the number one wide receiver in San Fran. So I like his potential upside. And then we move on to a number 80 here, which is going to be Marquise Brown. Marquise Brown is the number one wide receiver on an absolutely trash Cardinals team that is projected less than five wins in this upcoming season, but it doesn't mean anything because Hollywood Brown is an elite wide receiver. Now he's going at number 80 here behind players that aren't even number one wide receivers on their own teams. So I'll take the risk on Marquise Brown here. I know Kyler's going to be out for a little while. I don't think it matters. I think he draws in about 10 to 12 targets a game and he'll score you fantasy points. I can guarantee you that. And number 83 on this list, George Pickens has been balling out in training camp. I know it's only training camp, but he showed potential last season to have those big weeks. George Pickens, year two breakout on a Steelers team. Kenny Pickett's going into year number two. I like my chances with George Pickens. I think he's a dog. All right. All right. Heading into round number eight here, Jahan Dotson is a name that immediately comes off the board for me. I like him at pick number 88. I honestly like him in ahead of all three of the people that are above him at pick number 87, 86, and 85 in Ingram, Burks, and Cooks. I would take him before all these people. Year two breakout is going to be real this year, folks. And Sam Howell is a better quarterback than he had last season. I like my chances. I'll take the risk, even though the Washington Commanders offense is one of the worst in the entire league. I'll take the risk here because their run game is not going to really get going. They need a lot of attempts to get the running game going. So as I was talking about earlier, Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, I like both both of them. Pick number 90 here, Jackson Smith and Jigba. I think he eventually takes over Tyler Lockett's role in the slot. I think he becomes an every game starter for you in your fantasy football leagues. And at pick number 90, once again, I'm going to go back to these top two wide receivers on this list. Traylon Burks, Brandon Cooks, I would rather have in Jigba over these two guys. Last but not least here, pick number 92, Antonio Gibson, I think provides better value than a lot of these guys uh, on this list above him, just for the fact that Listen, they're promising that Antonio Gibson is going to take the role of J.D. McKissick. And they've been saying nothing but good things about Antonio Gibson for the past three years now. You remember a couple of years ago when Antonio Gibson was going in the second round? I was a sucker that drafted him. And I'm going to get suckered in again to drafting him over Ro Brian Robinson in this upcoming season. I know the commanders have one of the worst offensive lines in the league, but Gibson is more of a pass catcher than Brian Robinson will ever be. I'll take my chances there. Heading on to round number nine here, the value selections that jump out at me would have been Khalil Herbert earlier on in the season. There's reports that he's going to split carries with Dante Foreman, which doesn't make any sense for me. I think it will be Khalil Herbert's job maybe midway through the season, if not sooner. But I think the value really lies in Juju Smith-Schuster here and Rashad Penny in round number nine. Juju is the number one wide receiver on a New England Patriots team that isn't the best passing offense in the league by any means. They do run the ball quite a bit. But he was playing well in Kansas City last season until he got his head absolutely almost knocked off his body in that one game and he had a concussion. I think he was never really the same after that. But before that, he was putting up a lot of good fantasy weeks. Pick number 104, Rashad Penny. I'll take a shot on Rashad Penny. Listen, the Eagles have had good running backs for the past couple of years now. They have the best offensive line in the, in the league. And you saw that last season, uh, Miles Sanders thrived, Kenneth Gainwell did pretty well, and so did Boston Scott. So they've proven in the past that they can come out of here with multiple good running backs in the offense. So Rashad Penny seems like a good pick here, especially in best ball leagues where you don't have to start him every single week. You can just hope that he performs very well. I take the risk on him there at 104. All right, moving on to round number 10 here. Personally, I like a lot of names on this list, including Quinton Johnston, Zay Flowers, Jarek McKinnon, and Elijah Moore, personally. 
So Quentin Johnson, let's just start it off. I don't think Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are gonna make it all the way through the season without getting injured at some point. It's been a trend basically for Mike Williams to start doing well, then he gets injured, which is which is terrible. Obviously, I'm not I'm not hoping for an injury for any of these players, but I think Quentin Johnson could easily slide into that role and not give it back to one of them when he does. Keenan Allen obviously is the PPR god. He's a machine on this team and Justin Herbert's favorite target, but Quinton Johnson has that potential to explode in an offense like this that passes the ball a lot and scores a lot of points. Next up, Zay Flowers. Lamar Jackson finally has some weapons on this team. He's got Odell and he has Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is looking like a stud. He looked like a stud in college. And I like my chances here with Flowers and I'll take a shot because if Lamar's talking all this stuff, he's talking about he's never had any weapons. Let's see what he does with some weapons here. Jarek McKinnon at number 115. I think that's a steal in best ball leagues, especially. He had multiple weeks where he scored over 30 PPR fantasy points last year and he could do that again in one of the top scoring offenses in the National Football League. And it's pretty clear to me from last season that they can have two fantasy relevant running backs in Isaiah Pacheco and McKinnon. Pacheco for the hard downhill running, and then you got McKinnon for the pass catching potential, especially on third down and stuff like that. So McKinnon's not a bad pick at all. And then number 118 here, Elijah Moore. Hopefully Deshaun Watson plays better in this upcoming season. Elijah Moore, personally, I'm taking this as his year two breakout year. Last season with the Jets, I don't know what they were doing. They didn't use him correctly, and he played well in his 2021 season at the end of the year before he got injured around week 13, and then he was out for the entire season after that. But when he came back in 2022, he was not the same player because the Jets were just not using him for some reason. All right, moving on to round number 11, Sky Moore. Similar situation. He's sliding into that Juju Smith-Schuster role, in my opinion. Canarius Tony, he's already injured. I know he's coming back for week one and whatnot, but I don't trust Tony as a player that can stay healthy all season long. So I'm more than happy to scoop up Sky Moore here at 129. And then at 132, Rashad Bateman, very similar situation to Zay Flowers. I think this is gonna be a much improved offense in this upcoming 2023 to 24 season. So I'll take my shot on Rashad Bateman here. Round number 12, not too many players I like on this list, but I am gonna go with Rondell Moore and then potentially Dalton Kincaid. I mean, why would Buffalo draft a tight end if they're not going to use him? So one of your later round picks, I wouldn't mind taking Kincaid here on a Bills offense that scores a ton of points. Obviously, we know this. And then Rondo Moore was actually performing very well until he got injured last season. This is another situation where he is on the Arizona Cardinals. So you got to, you know, kind of dampen your expectations a little bit. But he has the potential to score a lot of fantasy points. And you got Marquise Brown and Rondell Moore leading the charge at the wide receiver position this year for Arizona. I'll take my chances once again. All right, round number 13 here. Okonwo I like, and I also like Nico Collins. Okonwo, he was coming into his own at the end of last season. I think he's going to produce a, t a similar target share in this upcoming year where tight ends in, in fantasy football are not really too, too relevant other than Travis Kelsey and the top others. Take your shot on Okonwo here. And then at number 147, Nico Collins, the number one wide receiver on an absolutely atrocious Texans team. Hopefully they get a little bit better with CJ Stroud. He's got to be better than Davis Mills at quarterback. So Nico Collins looks like a solid pick at 147 here round number 14 give me kenneth gainwell for the same reasoning that i said earlier with deandre swift and rashad penny this eagles offense can provide good value at the running back position for two to three players and i'll take my risk on gainwell he'll score a couple touchdowns this season just wait and see and then last but not least i'll take Jawan johnson another tight end that i think is pretty undervalued he had a couple good games last season Taysom hill is still on the team and he will vulture away some touchdowns so just keep that in mind but Juan Johnson did score a good amount of touchdowns last season I think he could easily do it again in this upcoming year round number 15 I like Jalen Hyatt and I like Rashi Rice Jalen Hyatt on the New York Giants they don't have that clear number one option they got Hodgins they have Slayton and they have Paris Campbell I believe as well I think Jalen Hyatt could easily see number one wide receiver potential in his future. I don't know if it's going to happen this season. I think he might need a little more time in the league, but I'm willing to take the risk on him here because like I said, the Giants don't have that clear number one option. And then Rashi Rice, if anything happens to Kadarius Tony, if anything happens to Sky Moore, I think Rashi Rice could slide into that position and thrive in one of the top scoring offenses in the league. Round number 16, Irv Smith Jr. And then I like uh gus edwards at pick number 192 for sure 
Gus Edwards would be the primary pick here because J.K. Dobbins cannot stay healthy for the life of him. At 192 in your fantasy drafts, you need to be drafting Gus Edwards. He could be the starter if anything happens to Dobbins, and he's still not fully healthy yet. And then we got Irv Smith Jr. With Hayden Hurst leaving Cincinnati, Irv Smith Jr. should be the number one tight end here. He'll get some action. He'll catch some touchdowns. Joe Burrow is an absolute stud, so he'll get his tight end the ball. Round number 17, we're really getting into the deep portion, into the depths of the fantasy football rosters here. Hunter Renfro slot receiver on the las vegas raiders everybody's forgetting what hunter renfro did two seasons ago he had over a thousand yards receiving and then last year he was hurt for the majority of the year i like the pick here at 196 the value is certainly there uh jimmy g doesn't throw the ball downfield as much as Derek carr did so hopefully he sees a little more action here he could be a better better value play than the other two las vegas raiders receivers in Devontae adams and jacoby myers and then last here we have marquez of all this scantling at 199 very similar situation to sky Moore and rashi rice i like the offense obviously i'm all in on the chiefs offense it's given me no reason not to be in on him the last couple of seasons all that although they do have a lot of mouths to feed travis kelsey rashi rice and sky Moore. anything happens to any of those guys marquez valdez scantling is your guy here to slide into that position and he's been very consistent over the past couple of years you know what to expect from valdez scantling you're not going to get the consistent you know week to week 20 points or anything like that but he'll have a great game here and there so especially in best ball take your risk on Valdez Scantling here and then the final round round number 18 I was just talking about CJ Stroud I'll take a risk on him on this list that's not really too stacked you got a couple defenses on the list you got a couple kickers going here so give me CJ Stroud in round number 18 if he falls to you just on the potential he's got to do better than Davis Mills on this Texans offense and he can run the ball when needed and then last but not least Hayden Hurst at 214 Carolina's number one option for tight end he played all right with the Cincinnati Bengals so if anything could carry over and then you got Bryce Young hopefully relies on Hayden Hurst a little bit in this offense anyways guys if you enjoyed this video if you disagreed with anything in this video or if you agreed with anything in this video let me know down in the comment section down below drop a thumbs up on this video I will catch you in the next video peace